Hey, Rahul, it's good to see you. Great to see you too, Ron. All right, here we are in a Zoom-defined world. Um, just, uh, you know, this great honor of the, uh, the, the, the best paper prize for, for our paper, Value Creation and Innovation Ecosystems, which came out in 2010. Um, so I guess the, the, the plan is we'll talk a little bit about where that paper came from um, and what's happened since. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's such a great honor for us uh, to get that award. I, I remember as a, as a doctoral student working with you, uh, 2005, good old days in Fontainebleau, France, and uh, it brought back uh, many fond memories of uh, learning from you, collaborating with you, and now as we know it, uh, contributing to the field. Yeah, you know, so it's, it, it's really kind of a cool adventure, right, in that ecosystems as a topic which today has become quite central in the academic literature starts really out of the industry um and in the you know in the, in the the we we get this early translational work um really more on the applied side uh we have moore's death of competition right then uh mark Ziti um and his co-author put out um the uh the, the keystone strategy book right i had my hbr article come out and the, our entry point into this ecosystem story was um, looking for your dissertation, if you recall. <laughs> I do remember that. In fact, I was looking uh, at some of the notes and uh, some of the trips uh, that you and I made together, uh, visiting semiconductor companies and visiting uh, the broader lithography ecosystem uh, folks, uh, both in California and in Austin, Texas. And uh, and I think it was, uh, I mean, for me as a doctoral student, just in my first year, I remember the, the, the spring of that year where, um, you know, I was interested in studying technology evolution and technology strategy. Um, and it was clear that uh, the semiconductor industry that I spent a lot of my time in um, could be a good place to explore many of these ideas. And I also remember having this conversation with you that, uh, you know, should I spend do my dissertation in the semiconductor industry or should I do something else? Uh, because there were just so many papers in the semiconductor industry. In fact, Henderson and Clark, her seminal paper had lithography in the same context. So I think uh, your, your guidance and, and wisdom in terms of leveraging my experience and uh, staying true to the semiconductor setting was an amazing platform for us to create this paper and, and contribute uh, yeah. to this mode. You know, it was interesting because we went out to California to look for actually demand hedge, uh, an empirical paper in the semiconductor industry on demand heterogeneity. <laughs> right? And we, we went out and we, we talked with players throughout this ecosystem and we made two discoveries. One was that they were not collecting the data that we had hoped for. But two was as we were going through these conversations and with this idea of of, of ecosystems in the air was that there was this opportunity to take a structured view on the issue of technology development within ecosystems. Um, and I, I say that was kind of the real departure point for this paper was, so, you know, in this, hold, hold on, I, 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 found, I found my presentation of the paper from 2008, right? So I'll, I'll show you this picture. Um, Right, so kind of in, 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 in the 2006 HBR article, I got a, we had, which I remember sharing with you and, and you having a, a, a mix of reactions to. Um, can you see the screen? Yes. Um, the, your first reaction was like, oh, big deal. But then we drove into it and this idea of needing to think about complements, complementary technologies, not just as, value adding partners, but caring about the structure of that collaboration, right? What we, we talk about is a structure of interdependence, right? Led to the construction of, of this figure, right? We're basically, the big aha was that there's technological change taking place throughout the surroundings of the core lithography tool. Um, and that if we can characterize what's happening in the environment, we can learn something very profound about what competition looks like, in particular that paper focused on first mover advantage, um, we can learn something very profound about when we're gonna see first mover advantage and when we won't, 
right? And I'd say kind of the, the, your background in the industry, I still recall, you know, you were able to set up these amazing interviews for us, both in 2005 in California, and then we went back, we went to Texas, to Austin in 2006, right? Um, right? This is actually, let's see if I can get this to come up, right? I don't know, this is, uh, this is you and me at Semitech, right? Wow, we, we look so young. Um, this is in 2006 at the, uh, at the main research fab at Semitech. And I think part of what allowed this paper to be at least my reading to be as interesting as it is, was we spent so much time in the actual field to try to understand not just that this was the structure of interdependence, but then, you know, spending a lot of time trying to figure out how do we characterize? Yeah, the issue. absolutely. And, and I remember when we made the first trip uh, to California in 2005, right? We had the demand side view, and then you thought about the complements uh, in terms of technologies. And it was clear that as we're talking to uh, the practitioners, uh, whether it's you know the tool manufacturers or the semiconductor manufacturers or even analysts, I mean, they all you know saw mask and resist as, as really key complements. I think what, what we were able to also pick up beyond that was, it was not just a complement story and we were able to think about the full ecosystem and bringing the component side and the complement side. And I think, if not for spending that many days and weeks uh, on the ground, uh, I think that sensibility just as an outsider would not have been, have been possible. So I, I think for me, uh, I think it was just an amazing way to embed yourself in a context that I knew a little bit about, but not having that structure in mind. Uh, but as we learned more and more about the ecosystem, the technologies, the generations, it was so clear that if you just see this phenomenon from a point of view, an uh, early mover or complement, you would miss this other piece. And then the big aha for us was, right, when we went back uh, to Austin in 2006 with some, prelim with some preliminary findings, that if you put the whole ecosystem challenge together in one construct, you cannot show any differences in terms of uh, the performance across these firms. And once you separate them as a complement story versus a component story, it really reveals important differences in terms of entry, entry time and advantage. Right, you need the structure. And then the reason that the structure makes a difference is because it affects how you view the world, right? And here really it was kind of understanding the difference between upstream interdependence and downstream interdependence that Kind of craft the case for us. Exactly, and and I, 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 I you know, I remember having these conversations with you in the corridor, uh, you know, of INSEAD strategy group, and saying, Ron, we're finding this really cool things, and it's rigorous, and you know, it's taken a couple of years to figure out a way to measure these challenges and 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 the ecosystem characterization. But when I go and present this uh, to faculty outside, and they say ecosystems, that's uh, that's something consultants talk about, and that's something. <laughs> academics should stay away from. So I think there was a bit of a tension in the field that on the one hand, we were discovering and, and in a rigorous manner, uh, shedding light on some important mechanisms and offering a theoretical framework. But, but our academic community was feeling this dissonance that ecosystem shouldn't be part of academia. That's just practice. Yeah, I guess there is. Yes, I mean, in that regard, kind of the best paper prize for our a paper that had a, a rocky start as, you know, by the way, our the org science paper um, on what firms uh, make versus where they know, our, our, our SMJ paper on, you know, the pace of, of substitution on S-curves, which went through, uh, <laughs> dare, dare I say it on the video, eight rounds. Um, the, it, yeah, it's in some ways kind of getting this recognition for this work that in the beginning looked very, um, was not at all obvious to most observers that there was something core academic here. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, that, that's really part of, the, part of the honor of receiving the prize. Absolutely. No, I think if you look back in time, I mean, there were so many moments, at least in my career, where I felt, you know, especially the doctorate students, and you know, I interact with many doctorate students now, as if I would have taken an approach that I need three papers in five years time, I don't think I've ever uh, gone on the path that I did with you or studying these ecosystems, spending time in the field and really focusing more on the ideas and discovering the phenomenon than what the paper might look like. 
Yeah, you know, I think I, th I think that's an important point, right? Which is, so I think part of the reason this paper had such a big impact is because the empiricism is good and crisp and powerful. But before we could get to that empiricism, right? We had to really drive through the theory and then figure out how do you, come, you know, coming up with the measures of change in an ecosystem, right? Took a lot of work to first come up with the direction for what that measure is. And then of course, a lot of work to get the data to construct those measures. And, you know, I'd say, I, I think that's a very, maybe that's a useful message to, to people who are, you know, there's so many great questions that this ecosystem context opens up, right? We've discussed, there's a, you know, on the one hand, there's all this great stuff on technology. Um, although I would say that if anything, kind of this paper was very much about technology transitions, about you know what I you know what I would call co-innovation in in my book, the wide lens plug for the wide lens. I think there's a huge amount of, of available work to be done on questions of adoption chains. Yeah. How do you actually line up uh, partners into these configurations? Um, you know, you've brought up the issue of business models. Right, yeah. all this, uh, you know, how do we, you know, how do you think about, uh, you got that, you know, the great ASM paper on, on, on capabilities for lining up complementers. All of these things kind of are great, rich, open questions, but I think that to get into them in ecosystem context, my sense is you need to get into the context in order to pull out yeah. um, the, the concept and the empirics. Yeah, in fact, you know, we go back to the kind of the demand side view of strategy, I think ecosystems, you know, add an additional layer of richness in terms of phenomenon of what that initial demand side thinking was as we think about adoption, but now we're thinking about different players that are contributing to the value creation. And I, well, and, it, and I found, right? I mean, <laughs> this is something yeah. that we've been working on for much longer than I have. Uh, well, where ecosystems came from actually was trying to characterize what drives demand heterogeneity and recognizing that different customers needed different complement bundles to create value from the very same technology. That's kind of where that stream of thinking came from. Um, and the, yeah, so very, very much tied to demand-based logic. And to your point, besides thinking about adoption at the end customer level, it now raises this issue of adoption at the partner level. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, a lot of what I'm thinking about today is actually the topic of this new book is implications for competition, right? How does, how, how does thinking in terms of ecosystems change the way we think about rivalry, right? And how do we change those engines to accommodate things that happen outside of a, an industry structure? Um, so I think, so, you know, this was, this, this was a, a great honor uh, to receive this prize. So we really, we really thank, um, we thank the editors, we thank the community. Um, it's a tremendous, tremendous honor to have people interested in this work. Um, and um, really looking forward to, to, to not just continuing our journey, but you know, to seeing how the field continues to, 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 to push this set of ideas forward. I mean, it's really, if you look back, 2010 was 10 years ago. There's so much interesting work being done in this area now. Um, it's really so very, very exciting. Um, so no, I just a, big, of, a big thank you to the entire community. Absolutely. absolutely. I, I just wanted to say, you know, I was just, my, my last point was, uh, you know, 10 years seems long time ago, but on the other hand, it just feels yesterday. Uh, and what I was able to, to, to learn along the way for the last 10 years, right? I mean, we, we identified the structural interdependencies as the key. And over the years, I have able to sort of broaden that thought process to looking at platform businesses, the work with Shivagar while looking at Apple and Android ecosystem. But more recently, I've been able to bring the NK models as a way to study these interdependencies. And in the Journal of Organization Design paper that I sort of laid out really from people who want to understand what ecosystem research is about, I do think it's a, it's a paradigm today where we're seeing a variety of scholarly attempts to both do careful empirical work, but really make this as a theoretical perspective and not just a phenomenon that can be studied through existing views, whether it's first mover advantage. So I, I do think while 10 years seems short in many ways, I do think as a field, 
uh, we have reached a point of inflection where there's enormous opportunities in terms of what the ecosystem-based thinking could present to strategy scholarship. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Very exciting. Thank you, thank you very much. And Ron, so good to connect with you again. Yeah, see you. <laughs>